good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is where you are. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, it is time for Shit I Love Sunday. So I apologize for my appearance this morning. I know I shouldn't have to apologize for it, but I have on very little makeup. I was just out in the rain. I have on sunscreen and uh, I'm in my cozy clothes and I haven't done my hair because it's Mother's Day and I don't want to do anything. So I'm not going to. Because it's Mother's Day, I decided that today, rather than doing the productivity slash organization thing I was going to do this week, I'm gonna do some baby things. In case you don't know, I have a one-year-old named Teddy, and so I am very fresh out of the baby phase, and so I have looked back on the last year and come up with my top five products that I loved having, and then my top five products that I bought and never used or didn't like. Of course, I'm gonna preface this by saying every baby is different, every mom is different, your needs will be completely different than mine, and so the things that worked for me may not work for you, and the things that didn't work for me, you may love, and that's okay. But I wanna go through the five things that I do think would benefit a lot of people. Let's start off with the positive, the top five things that I was so thankful to have throughout Teddy's newborn stage and babyhood. Babyhood, I don't know, whatever. So starting off, is my breast pump. I primarily used the Freemi. Um, I got it free through insurance and it is a hands-free pump. Um, the uh, I'll, I'll put a picture of it right here. Um, it is, I got it like a free through insurance, but um, it's also a lot less expensive than other hands-free pumps. Um, I also used the LV, which worked really well right away, but very quickly I lost suction. Um, very quickly it just became a huge frustration. I would pump for like 20 minutes and I would have nothing there because my boob wasn't pl placed right. I, I loved the free me because it was hands-free. Um, the cups fill eight ounces of milk. And so I could in the morning fill those with eight ounces of milk, which is fantastic. Um, they were super comfortable. They do stick out pretty far, but they, have now like slimmer cups that um, hold a little less milk but are a little less noticeable and, and I never had to replace a pump part. I used that thing for like six months and like every day multiple times a day and it was phenomenal. Um, so I would highly highly recommend that one especially if you're a working mom or I mean just anybody who's pumping and you want to have your hands free and you don't want to be plugged into a wall it is amazing. The next thing is one that I didn't think we would need and I ended up buying later on and this is the Hatch Nightlight. Um, this is one that's recommended by everybody but I was like this is expensive for a nightlight um, but it has so many different features. It's also a sound machine. It's also a clock. It's going to age with him really well because it has like a wake time where you can set it to turn on in the morning so that he can know when it's time to get up um, and it also um, again is controlled from your phone so when it was in the middle of the night I could turn it on to a red light so it wouldn't stimulate him uh, when I would come in to feed him or do a dream feed he would sleep through that um, it also was really helpful for um, if you I was you know, trying to get him to go to sleep and he wouldn't go to sleep and then he started to fall asleep and I wanted to turn down the light but I didn't want to get up so I could do it from my phone it was just really really handy it does have a sound machine as well um, but we actually used a different sound machine I'll link both products below because I really really loved our sound machine and it's funny because the sound machine um, wasn't the one that we used but it um, my mom had it and she bought it for her house and I liked it more so I took it and speaking of sound machines we also used two portable sound machines they're the same exact one but we bought two of them because we loved having that for the car and for his stroller and then for ourselves because we sleep with a fan and so now every time we travel we bring one with us for our hotels and it's so amazing one side note here about night lights, I also bought a bunch of like portable night lights to put around the house so that when I would wake up in the middle of the night to breastfeed or to um, like pump or whatever, I would just turn on the night lights. Those were lovely to have. And then they also work very well for tummy time later on. So there's um, some silicone round ones and then there's also something called Lumi Pets. I'll link both of them below. If I can insert the images, I will. So the next thing is something I didn't even know existed until I was gifted it by a friend of mine from high school's sister, who I'm now friends with, Lauren. Um, she sent me this so kindly and it is the Haka. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but in case you didn't know, when you're breastfeeding, if you're breastfeeding on one side, the other side is letting down and releasing milk as well. So you're, that's just going into your bra unless you have something to catch that in. And so the haka suctions onto your breast and it catches that milk. And so the first time I used it, I was like, holy shit, am I going to get like two ounces out of one breast that that milk would have been completely wasted. Um, it probably wouldn't have lost that much because it does suction a little bit, but it's still just phenomenal to have. 
This is another one that I didn't know existed until I was gifted it. And this is a butt paste spatula. It is to put on diaper rash cream. Um, it's a literal, literal spatula that um, you don't have to get your hands <laughs> involved in putting on diaper rash cream, which is phenomenal. Um, so that was gifted to me by my sister-in-law, Allie, and I'm so grateful to have it. Okay, so I guess this is gonna be more than five. I didn't plan for that. Just stick with me. Uh, two more things. The first thing is our Ergo Baby Baby Carrier. I loved having that thing. Not only did it let me have my hands free to be more productive when you're constantly holding a baby, but it's just so nice to have your baby close to you and sleeping on your chest. And at nighttime, like in the later evenings, oftentimes babies will need a cat nap. And it was very hard to get Teddy to go down for a little cat nap at like 5.30. So I would just put him on, put him on my chest, walk around, have that portable sound machine with me, do some laps, he'd fall asleep. I'd put on Vampire Diaries in my headset because that's what I was watching. Watch the weirdest things during that postpartum period. But we just do some laps and he would sleep. So great for travel, it's go great for going for walks, it's great for, again, you just need your hands free. Even now sometimes at a year old and a giant baby, I will put him in that um, if he's really clingy and I'm like, oh, bro, I can't hold you anymore because you are heavy and my shoulders are giving out. I just love having it. And that was gifted to me by my brother. So love my Ergo Baby. We actually called it uh, the Papoose. I, I don't know why, but we kept calling it the Papoose. And every time we'd reference the Papoose, people would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Our baby carrier. <laughs> Next thing is something that I literally said, I'm not gonna need that. And like rolled my eyes at it. We took the Taking Care of Babies newborn course. And it was really helpful to learn how to calm a baby and to learn about baby sleep but our son was born with tongue, lip, and cheek ties or restrictions, and so sleep was very challenging for him. I won't go into all of the things behind tongue, lip, and cheek ties. I'll link some podcasts below. I was um, featured on a podcast telling Teddy's actual story, so I can link that below as well, so you can see why that was such an issue. Sleep was just very, very hard for him, and he <laughs> did not really sleep much unless he was held and was on his tummy for most of his life leading up to his tongue tie release. And I had multiple calls with taking care of babies in that time because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how to help him sleep. And they were very nice and they helped me just like ease my mind to recognize that baby sleep is sporadic. Little did I know what was really going on. When it came time to have the release and finally try to get him to sleep on his own, which was a challenge, um, I bought the ABCs of sleep. And this is a sleep training program and I bought it with one consultation. Um, so it's a little higher price, but you get the call with it. I had the call with them and I said, hey, my son is having this tongue tie release, but we wanna help him work on sleep. Should I do it now? Should I do it later? And it just so happened that the woman I talked to, her son had had a tongue tie and had it released later in life. And so she empathized with me and she was like, yes, I know everything that you're going through. And she kind of helped me in that moment and she said, I wouldn't start this program now, I would wait. And she was like, let me give you another call. So they were so gracious and they gave me another free call um, or another another call that I already paid for, but they gave me technically like a free call later when we were ready to start the program. And that was invaluable. So we were able to sync that up with his tongue tie stretches and we did the ABCs of sleep. And again, it is sleep training. There is some crying it out involved. Um, for Teddy, it was very minimal. He cried uh, like 20 minutes the first night, which was brutal. And then it got better. And then on night 13, he cried for another like 20 minutes. Um, but any other time it was like five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. It was very, very minimal. And then in the middle of the night, he would wake up like once or twice, cry himself back to sleep. And now he rarely wakes up. Like if he does wake up, I know something is wrong. Um, if he's going through a sleep regression, he'll maybe make, wake up once a night. Um, and then other than that, like, and if he's sick, he'll wake up. And I, that I know that something is wrong because he does not wake up anymore. He wakes up and puts himself back to sleep. I think we're going on like, eight or nine days now without him waking up at night. So I'm last night he woke up a little bit, but put himself back to sleep. And I just happened to still be awake when he woke up. So I was like, oh, it's been a few nights, <laughs> probably it's time. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely life-changing because I was not sleeping before. I was waking up four or five times a night. I was getting maybe like four to six hours of sleep um, over the course of like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So it was just brutal and um, having, I don't think we would have gotten to where we are now without them. So I am very, very grateful. Okay, one last honorable mention, the Baba baby monitor, phenomenal. We have another one at my parents' house, very much dislike, absolutely love this one. And I love not having it on my phone because then when I'm out of town, I'm not tempted to check on him. 
and that thought. First up is anything other than dual zip jammies. Everybody told me this and I was like, nah, no. Just from the time that they are born until about six months and they're not like crawling very much, I would leave Teddy in these all day long. And they're just really easy to keep them warm, to put them in and out of nap time. And they zip up from the bottom and from the top. That's why they're called dual zip or double zip. And that way you can change diapers really easily without exposing their belly. And that's really helpful for the middle of the night. So I loved having some cute little outfits here and there to put him in for when we would go out or uh, especially when he's an itty bitty baby, it's just so cute to dress them up, but it makes life so much easier just to keep them in their jammies when they're sleeping so much. Just put them in a sleep sack, call it a day. Okay, the next thing is Greg water. I bought a ton of this before he was born. Just don't, it's not helpful. The one thing that was helpful was Colic Calm. It's a black, like homeopathic thing. We would give it to him every night because he was so fussy because of his ties and it really calmed him down and it helped him go to sleep and it helped with his gas, it helped with his spit up. Absolutely loved it. The next thing is all the swaddles that I bought. Again, I took the Taking Care of Babies class and they talk all about swaddling, so I bought a shit ton of swaddles. First of all, borrow them from your friends. If your friends have had kids, they probably have swaddles, borrow them from them. Find out which one works best for you because there were a lot of them that I bought that I hated, but I bought them and now I had them. Also with Teddy's tongue tie, he couldn't be swaddled. He couldn't have that restriction. So those, the ones that were like these kind of swaddles, not, not happening. But we ended up using a sleep sack instead, the Halo sleep sack, and he still wears that to this day, just obviously a bigger size. And the Halo ones are anywhere from like, I think 18 to $30, a lot cheaper than a lot of other sleep sacks, and he loves his. Um, and again, rather than buying a bunch of them, borrow them from your friends. If you need swaddles, please let me know. I will send you swaddles. Other things I wish I wouldn't have bought and would have borrowed from friends are things like bassinets, activity centers, um, any type of like baby, baby swing or bouncer. You're not going to use it for more than a very short period of time. And now I have all these baby toys and baby things that I don't know what to do with because they're just sitting down there. And yeah, we'll probably have another kid and yeah, we'll probably use them again. But for now, like I don't need them. And so I wish I would have just borrowed them and then borrowed them again. And the last thing, and this one breaks my heart because I wanted it to work for us so bad, it's the Snoo. It is a $1,500 bassinet. Uh, we got ours for $1,100 because of Tom's military discount, um, but it is a bassinet that makes noise and it uh, rocks them side to side. Um, and it's, it's pretty high tech and it's pretty cool, but with Teddy's tongue ties, it just didn't work for him because it just, it's a lot of money and it's really often toted as this like miracle solution and it's just not. So um, it can be really become mamas, mamas who have lost a baby, those of you who have lost your moms. I am thinking of you so much today. I hope that you take this day for yourself and I am so grateful that you're here. If you could please like, subscribe, share, all those things, that would be phenomenal. But again, I am just so happy that you are here. Thank you for being here and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.